Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of St. Luke's Gallery. This episode is being recorded on Pentecost Sunday, 2021. I haven't had an episode since Easter Sunday, and on that note, I hope you all had a blessed Easter season and enjoyed the last episode featuring Christ's appearance to Mary Magdalene by Alexander Ivanov. Since it's Pentecost, I thought it would be appropriate to find something to celebrate this important chapter in the church, and I've chosen this incredible work of art that I'm sure many of you have already seen, aptly titled The Pentecost, by the 18th century French painter Jean II Restoupe. As I've said in all previous episodes, the purpose of this site is to share my appreciation of sacred art with you and hopefully persuade you to look at art in general in a new perspective. This is a good occasion to show why I launched St. Luke's Gallery for that very mission. When I did an initial search for Pentecost art, this is largely what I saw across multiple search engines. Sadly, Pentecost was hijacked by the modernists after the Second Vatican Council, and more recently by the Charismatics. Most of what you're seeing here are the fruits of that free-spirited interpretation. Thankfully, an 18th century French painter managed to capture the true spirit of Pentecost, and so let's transition into the works of Jean II Restout. Jean II Restout was born in Rouen in 1692 to Jean I Restout and Marie M. Jouvenet. His mother was the sister of the then well-known painter Jean Jouvenet. Jean was a painter of the late Baroque classicism style, and in 1717, the Academy Royale of Painting and Sculpture elected him to be a member on his work for the Prix de Rome. Later in life, his son, Jean-Bernard Restoux, also won the Prix de Rome in 1758, and then later he nearly lost his life during the, for, during the Reign of Terror after he was made guardian of Paris's Garde Meuble. Jean II Restoux died at the age of 76 in 1768. As I've done in the previous episodes, I'll start by sharing some of Restout's other works, and these are two very apt ones I'll start with before we get to the Pentecost. On the left, Ananias restoring the site of St. Paul, painted in 1719, and on the right, The Pilgrims of Emmaus, from 1735. Both of these have visual similarities to the Pentecost, and that's something that Restout carried through in other works of art before and after he painted the Pentecost. Let's look at the three of them together. Note how our Lord from the Pilgrims of Emmaus in the lower right corner has pretty much the same exact stance as Our Lady does in the Pentecost shown in the center. The position of the head, the clasping of the hands, the blue drape, and the aura, it's all there. Ananias restoring the sight of St. Paul in the lower left makes use of the colors blue and red as punch colors like we see in the other two. And with all three of these, the bursts of light from above, representing the Holy Ghost, are also a common denominator. Give Restoute credit for its brilliant consistency. Finding detailed information about his bio is difficult, but I think it's safe to assume that he had a devotion to the Holy Ghost. These next two paintings, while separate, were both commissioned as companion altarpieces for a monastery in Bourgogne, France. On the left, the Ecstasy of St. Benedict, completed in 1750, and on the right, The Death of St. Scholastica, completed 20 years earlier. It's fitting that these are companions because, in real life, Benedict and Scholastica were brother and sisters. These two paintings are much darker from what we previously saw, but when you consider their habits and their surroundings, the dark colors and the dark settings are appropriate. Tying these back to the subject of this episode, Note the presence of the Holy Ghost in both. This is the presentation of Christ in the temple, painted in 1759, 27 years after the Pentecost. As he did with the Pentecost, Restout maintained the dominance of the colors blue and red in the clothing. In fact, Our Lady appears to be dressed the same as she was in the earlier painting. Composition-wise, I don't think this is as strong as the Pentecost. There's not a real focal point here, but nevertheless, it is a good painting, 
and paintings of the presentation seem to be few and far between. So if you need something to meditate upon while praying the fourth joyful mystery of the rosary, this is a worthy reference. And now let's spend some time with the Pentecost. It's a large oil painting measuring 15 feet high by 25 feet wide. The Pentecost was painted in 1732 as a commission for the monastery of Saint-Denis, just outside Paris where it was placed inside the dining hall. At some point the painting was vandalized and cut into the rectangular composition we now have. What is believed to have been lost was an image of a dove that radiates rays of light that we see coming from the top. Despite this tragic loss, the existing painting is still a work to behold. I love the pyramidal composition. It's very focused with the descent of the Holy Ghost, touching Our Lady first, and then falling upon the surrounding apostles. There's a lot going on here, and if you think to what probably happened, there was a lot going on emotion-wise. Fear, amazement, ecstasy, and even humility on the part of the apostles, who Jesus had upbraided just before the ascension. And the rest dude captured all of these emotions here. The one calming factor is, of course, Our Lady in the center, who knew this moment would come, and stands amongst the others as an example of trust, confidence, and stability. For the next few slides, I'm going to share sections of this powerful painting for you to enjoy and meditate upon. Pentecost, in my opinion, is Jean Restout's masterpiece. As we saw in some of his earlier works, it all led up to this, and in a few of his later works we saw, the impact carried through to those works as well. The third person of the Holy Trinity can be difficult to visualize and meditate upon. After all, it's the Holy Ghost, not the tangible Jesus Christ, the Son of God who lived on earth amongst us. I think Restout captured it well here and this is definitely a recommended meditation on the third glorious mystery of the Rosary. When the Holy Ghost came at Pentecost, it was an awesome and an initially scary moment, but it was also foretold, and all of those emotions from the Apostles to the Blessed Virgin are shown here. The Pentecost today resides inside Paris's Louvre Museum. And that concludes Episode 8 of St. Luke's Gallery. Thank you for watching and I invite you to come back again for additional presentations. Until then, please visit stlukesgallery.com and also the channels on BitChute, Vimeo, Rumble, or YouTube. I'll have another episode in a few weeks. In the meanwhile, if you have a question or a comment, you can email me at bail at stlukesgallery.com. Thank you again, and may God bless you.